Hello friends and enemies. In part one of this video, I want to show you the exact method, including the protocol that I follow for successfully tissue culturing begonias at home. And in part two, I'll do a liminal space mukbang from the back rooms. Wait, no. In part two, I'll do a Pecha Kucha style show and tell of my begonia collection and talk about how I care for them. I loosely follow the protocol that is outlined in my Bible, plants from test tubes. I'm sick, by the way. That's why I sound like this. And there's a lizard running around on the floor. The only media that I use for begonia tissue culture contains full MS, which in this case, I'm using plant cell technologies. So that is 4.54 grams, 30 grams per liter of sucrose, 0.5 milligrams per liter of BAP, and 0.1 milligrams per liter of NAA. I adjust the pH of the media to 5.7, and I throw it in the makeshift autoclave, aka the pressure cookers, for 15 minutes at 15 PSI. For the explants, or the tissue samples that are used for micropropagation, I use leaves that I rinse in water with some dish soap or tween 20 for 10 minutes. I then place the leaves into a mixture of 10% household Clorox bleach for another 10 to 15 minutes. I forgot to mention that you need to rinse the explant in sterile distilled water underneath the slow hood. I cut the leaves into one centimeter or so sections. They don't need to be uniform in size exactly. And to prevent contamination as much as possible, I stick to one explant per container of media. Once I have all the explants in their respective little containers, I wrap each deli cup with saran wrap as an extra precaution for preventing contamination. I think my contamination rate for the begonias is around 10% with this method when I'm using the Liminar Flow Hood. Of course, I wanna get it lower than that, but it can be challenging to do at home. There's literally lizards on the floor. After two or three weeks, that's when I typically start to visibly notice some callus growth on the explants. Callus is just a word to describe a mass of totipotent cells. Totipotent cells are just unspecialized cells, so they have the ability to produce specialized cells that make up a plant. I do the first subculture into fresh media around the six to eight week mark. The PGRs and the recipe for the media is exactly the same here. We're just transferring these plants into fresh media, essentially. You might be thinking, why do we bother moving the explants into a new container if it's just going to contain the same exact hormones as the initial media contained? And the reason for that is just because I don't want to have a buildup of ethylene gas in the containers that can prevent the plants from growing properly. At this point, if you wanted to, you could break up the callus or cut the pieces of callus into multiple pieces and be putting them into more and more containers. And that way at the end, you'll end up with more plants. But even if you don't break up the callus and you just take that whole chunk and put it into a new container, you will still end up with a lot of plants, which I will show you. The second and final subculture occurs six to eight weeks after that. I do this final subculture just to grow the plants a little bit larger before they come out of tissue culture so that they'll have the best chance of acclimating successfully. You can see that when the plants are ready to come out of tissue culture, they can actually fill up the entire jar, like this one, which is a hybrid of Tamuyuk Blue and Dracopelta, or this one, which is Tuyan Quang, which I have also seen called Erectocarpa. To acclimate the plants, I'm using a mixture of fluval stratum and perlite as my media, and I pretty much follow my own tutorial on acclimation to a tea. The cell trays that I'm using to acclimate these plants are from Timu, the sponsor of today's video. If you need cost-effective and budget-friendly pots and planters or cell trays like these, I highly recommend checking out the selection on Timu's website or on their mobile app. I've personally found a lot of products on Timu to be cheap cheaper than Amazon and they even offer free shipping. The cell trays that Timu uses have a closable air vent, so they're great for acclimating plants from tissue culture to lower humidity to really set them up for the best chance of success. They also sell nursery pots in bulk, which is what I use for some of the larger begonias that I have as well as for some of my other plants, like this beautiful Syngonium strawberry milk and this super cool blue oil fern, which I will be putting into tissue culture in my next video. For the blue oil fern, we are actually not going to be using MS Medium. We are going to be using Parker Thompson Fern Basil Salt Mixture, which is 
exhilarating. Timu also sells more decorative planters if you are more concerned about aesthetic than I am. And they also sell orchid pots if you are an orchid enthusiast. I really like the clear orchid pots with the orchid cone that allows for better airflow, but they are super expensive at garden stores near where I live. And Timu sells them for a very reasonable price. If you're not satisfied with your purchase, Timu offers free returns within 90 days. Thank you again to Timu for sponsoring this video. Over the past six months, I have collected the infinity stones of Terrarium Begonias, the 20 fingers of Sukuna, if you will. Begonia Darth Vaderiana just proves that you can name a plant whatever you want. Not gonna lie, I thought this would be a little bit larger when I purchased it, as these are very expensive. Begonia Sumatra Utara looks a little sad because I have been taking tons and tons of leaf samples from it for tissue culture, and it looks a little similar to Begonia SP Vietnam. If you're interested in paying $350 for an SP Vietnam, there is one for sale on Etsy, and full transparency, I did try to purchase this plant recently but the seller would not hold it for one month while I moved so in a month I'll just go back and purchase it because there's only one sucker on the internet paying $350 for a begonia and her name is Plants in Jars. Begonia Liali was recommended to me by one of my Etsy customers so if that was you thank you. I got this from chloro.files on Instagram. She is awesome and she hybridizes a lot of her own begonias as well. Begonia U692, which I have also seen called Erectocarpa and Tuyin Quang, was discovered in Vietnam in 2015. Last night, I actually took a ton of these out of tissue culture. Begonia Tamuyuk or Tamuyuk Blue is one of the few blue plants that occur naturally in the world. Racopelta X Tamuyuk is a hybrid of two begonias. Begonia SP Mint is exactly what it sounds like. It's green. Even begonias were not immune to the 2023 mint plant hype train. Begonia rockii has this iridescent blue sheen that is amplified when you shine a light on it or take a photo of it with flash. Havovina also has a blue sheen on it when you take a photo of it with flash although it's much more satiny than the rocky eye. I also have a ton of these growing in micropropagation, but they are still all in the very early stages. Begonia Sarawak is the begonia that got me interested in the genus to begin with. Muna is a hybrid between Begonia Kurtzii Galaxy crossed with Begonia Variabilis. Begonia Bancon is green. That's all there is to say about that one. With a few exceptions, that is my entire collection. In terms of care, I keep all these plants in a closed terrarium. There are beautiful ways to do this. Mine are fairly utilitarian. <laughs> it's literally just a cheap plastic tub that I poked some holes in with a soldering iron and called it a day. For some airflow, it can be helpful to stick a USB fan into the tub to create some airflow around the plants. For media, I use either Fluval Stratum or HP Pro Mix. The HP Promix dries out a lot faster than the Fluval Stratum does, so you have to water more often if you go that route. I hardly ever water my begonias that are in the aquarium substrate, maybe like once a month. When I do water the plants, I use Maxi Fertilizer. Begonias are very heavy feeders, so it's okay to give them the full dose which in this case, I think is one quarter teaspoon per gallon. If you're still here, thank you so much for listening to me talk about my favorite plant for 10 minutes straight. If you're interested in learning more about tissue culture, I have plenty of tutorials on my YouTube channel. The supplies that I use to do tissue culture at home are all from Plant Cell Technology, and I do have a code with them for 10% off your order, which is plants in jars, all in caps. Bye.